Already, my friends, we're going to derive the Gibbs-Helmholtz equation. It's going to be short, it's going to be awesome. And just note I got other derivations of this in the description below and many, many, many other videos on thermodynamics. Okay, so we're going to start off with the definition of Gibbs energy, G, which is defined as the enthalpy H minus entropy S times the temperature. And from here, we're going to divide both sides by T. So we took this equation, divided by T, and now we're going to take the derivative with respect to T holding pressure constant. That's what this is. These are partial derivatives because G depends on more than just the temperature. And this is the derivative of G over T, and then we're taking the derivative of the left and right hand side. Now this, what we're going to do here is we're just going to rearrange. So this is the derivative of G over T, and then we're going to expand this derivative into the brackets. So what's we're rearranging. So this is the derivative with respect to t of g over t, just we didn't change anything. And then we're taking the derivative with respect to t of each term down in here. Now to go further, to take the derivative of h over t, this is like the product rule. And I know there's a divided by right here, but imagine this is h times 1 over t. So if we do the product rule, we take the derivative of the first function, so that's the derivative of h, times the second function left alone, 1 over t, plus the first function left alone, h, times the derivative of the second function. And the derivative of 1 over t is negative 1 over t squared. And now this one here, we just kind of left as it is. Now let's find something meaningful from this term. And we're going to do that using the thermodynamic definition of entropy change which is ds is greater than or equal to dq over t. Now, if we assume a bunch of things, constant pressure, PV work only, and knowing that state functions, and it doesn't matter if we take that path through a reversible or an irreversible process. So the equality stands and we can convert dh into dq using the first law of thermodynamics. I did go deeper into this derivation. So this is kind of, if you're not okay with that, maybe check out the link where I have a longer description of the derivation. Okay, from here, we're going to divide both sides by dt. So, and we're assuming constant pressure still. So this is ds divided by dt right here. These are now curly d's or the partial symbol because s depends on more than just the temperature. So it's a partial derivative. So it's, this is just, but this, think of this as like ds over dt. And then same thing here, dh over dt. And then the one over t is here. And look at this, these two derivatives are exactly the same. So we can take this equation here and substitute into here. And even though this might look complicated, these first and third terms on the right hand side, they cancel. So that's cool. And that leaves us with uh, this equation right here, which is essentially the Gibbs-Helmholtz equation. Now, we never care about g or just h. We care about the change in Gibbs energy or the change in the Helmholtz energy. So we could actually do this whole thing every single step the exact same way, except rather than dealing with g, we can deal with delta g is delta h minus delta s times t. And if we do that, we would be left with the Gibbs-Helmholtz equation in differential form right here. And just knowing that delta g is uh, is dependent on just the final and the initial states. Cool. Now this form is the differential form. It's not the most useful form that you'll need for exams. So we're going to manipulate a little bit to get the integral form. So we're going to multiply both sides by dt and integrate. And hopefully that's that's okay. So if we do that integrate, now this is like dx, right? So And the integral of dx is just x. So the integral of d of this fraction is the fraction from the final and the, and I shouldn't say final, from state two and state one. And then we're leaving this right-hand side. Now, I need to pause for a moment here because even though there's two different temperatures, this is very, very, very important, okay? So I hope you're listening. Even though there's two different temperatures, the temperature doesn't change during the process. This is an isothermal process. This is the delta T, G, sorry, this is the delta G when the process occurs at one temperature, T1, and this is the change in Gibbs energy when the process occurs at the temperature two. So we can calculate the change in Gibbs energy at a different temperature if we know what the change in Gibbs energy at an at some at one temperature is, essentially. Okay, now this is useful if your enthalpy change depends on temperature, which it always does, so we would need an equation and integrate that. However, on an exam, we 
may assume that delta H is constant. So we can yank it out of the integral if it's a small temperature range, even though delta H does change, we could assume it's constant, yank it out of the integral right here, and integrate the integral of negative one over T squared is, is one over T, T2 minus T1, and this, my friends, is our Gibbs-Helmholtz equation in the integrated form, assuming constant enthalpy and all those other things. All right, y'all, hope you enjoyed it. Good luck on your midterms and final exams. I know this is not the easiest course. This is quite challenging for some, but just hang in there. Continue doing many, many problems. The more problems you do, the better you'll get. Good luck again. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Mm -hmm.